In looking at the educational attainment of children in need and children in care, we took two main approaches. The first of these was to look at national data sets for almost half a million children in England who started school year one in 2006 and we were able to track them right through to school year 11 and their GCSE or equivalent exams in 2017. Alongside that we had access to social care data so we could look at any time during those 11 years when a child needed a social worker and also any periods that they might spend living in care. The data were given to us on an anonymised basis, so although we could identify patterns of characteristics and experiences, we couldn't identify any individual children in the data. Alongside this data set analysis, we also conducted 123 interviews with children, parents, carers, social workers, teachers, virtual school heads and other professionals in the local authorities. And from putting these two things together, we've come up with a number of key findings. So the first of these is regarding the attainment gap between children who need a social worker at some point during their school years and those who don't. At the end of primary school, that gap is between 10 and 16%. So those who need a social worker at some point have scores that are between 10 and 16% lower than those who don't need a social worker. And that gap is bigger at the end of secondary school. So the gap at that point is between 34 and 53%. So there's certainly an attainment gap there that needs to be explained. One important thing that we did was to identify some of the factors that were related to exam performance at age 16. And in doing so, we were able to see that children who needed a social worker were massively overrepresented in terms of other forms of disadvantage. They came on average from more deprived neighbourhoods. They were much more likely to be eligible for free school meals. They were between two and six times as likely to have a special educational need or disability as other children of the same age. And in terms of their school experiences, they were at least five times as likely to receive an exclusion, whether a permanent or a fixed term exclusion, at least three times as likely to have changed school in year 10 or 11, those crucial final exam years. And they had at least three times as many missed school days due to absences. So high levels of other forms of disadvantage in these pupils actually explained a large part of the attainment gap. That's not to say that there weren't important aspects of the social work experience and certainly we found that children who had a social worker in year 11, so who were perhaps having a, a later intervention from social work, and also children who had a number of different separate periods of social work intervention with a case closure in between those were also doing more poorly in their exams at age 16. So alongside this database analysis, we were also able to ask the families and the children themselves what they felt had made a difference to their educational outcomes. And there were a number of factors that they were able to expand on from the data sets, but they also identified some additional factors that we wouldn't have picked up on just by using the data sets. So, for example, a lot of the parents of children in need, so that's children who have a social worker but still remain living with their birth families, talked about the limited resources that they had. We heard stories of parents who had had to make personal sacrifices to try and buy things for children like school uniforms, but were unable to afford some of the other educational resources that were necessary, like books, laptops and internet access. As well as this, they talked about some of the levels of social, emotional and mental health needs that young people had that made it really difficult for them to concentrate on learning. And related to that was their relationships with 
the peer group. So their relationship with other children in the class could sometimes be quite difficult, particularly if there was a lack of understanding from the peer group about their social work status. And in that case, that was interfering with their learning. And another important finding that came out of the interviews was around relationships with teachers. We heard stories of some very positive relationships, teachers who were very understanding of children's situations and their needs and who often used humour in dealing with situations. And in contrast, we also heard some quite negative stories of relationships with teachers, particularly those who showed little or no understanding of children's additional needs, of how their backgrounds and their experiences might be affecting their learning. And in particular, children seem to uh, pick out the example of teachers who used raised voices a lot in the classroom or who used um, exclusions or detentions uh, as punitive devices without understanding what kind of effect that might have on children with particularly difficult experiences. So a number of important findings have emerged from this research that can help us to think about what might explain the attainment gap between children who have a social worker at some point during their school and those who don't. And by identifying these factors, that helps us to think about where we need to put in place extra support and extra resources and whether there are particular families who might benefit from more in the way of support. And that's going to be even more important in the current climate when we do start seeing schools reopening in the coming months and we have children who have particular disadvantages from their home environments, for example, we're going to see a really wide gap between those children who've had little or no access to educational resources at home and those who come from families where that's not an issue. So it's going to help us to think in the months ahead about where we need to target our support and our resources.